All right, my friends, we're going to start on a two-part series comparing annuities, income annuities versus bonds, all right, uh, for an income stream. This is for those of you who need income. I want to show you the benefits of an income annuity. I think income annuities get a lot thrown out the baby with the bathwater simply because everyone hears, I hate annuities or annuities are evil or because variable annuities or whatever. And I'm just telling you, income annuities are not variable annuities. Income annuities should be part of your income plan. I'm going to show you why here today, especially as we compare income annuities versus bonds. Now, for the record, I don't sell annuities. I don't sell bonds. I could care less. Do whatever you got to do. So I don't want someone to say, oh, you're just saying that to convince people to buy a high commission product. If you say that, you're, just, you're wrong. You're just, for some reason, you got a vendetta against the industry. I don't know why, but that's not me, so I don't care. All right, so I don't sell anything. That's all there is to it. I'm going to tell you why in a ver uh, not a variable annuity, where we can talk about those later for sure if you want, but why an income annuity should play a role for financial planning for income streams. So let's go right into it. So I got my little chart here and I looked at USAA. So I'm a member of USAA, so I can, it's nice. You can actually get quotes on in income annuities. And unfortunately, I went to immediateannuities.com and immediateannuities.com, you got to put all your information in there and then they say no agent will call you but I don't know what's going to happen. I don't. I, I just don't know. So I, I didn't want to do that to compare other companies versus USAA. I would have liked to, but I, I just don't trust these guys, frankly. So I'm not going to do that. Like if you go to LendingTree.com, if you put your info in there, you're going to get calls from bankers all over the country. And just don't do that because these guys call you like crazy. And, and I don't want that. In fact, that's just real quick. I just read a, a study today that said 55% of all sell calls are now junk or spam. I, I couldn't believe it. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought they weren't supposed to call you on your cell phone. Fifty-five percent of all cell calls are spam, or you know, from not the uh, telemarketing. I've shocked me. All right. Oh yeah. Don't forget. Don't forget to welcome the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe. All right. So I went to USA, and if you're not familiar with USA, it's a mutual company, and that means it's owned by its shareholders, by its shareholders, by its members. Vanguard is a similar type of investment firm. It's owned by shareholders. So USA and Vanguard, they have to appeal to their shareholders or the USA, a member. So mutual companies owned by its members. USA isn't quite the same as like a Northwestern Mutual, but similar structure that there's no, they don't sell anything uh, to the public in terms of uh, there's no stock that you can buy. There's no shareholders or anything like that. The shareholders are the members. So USA is a tax-paying entity. All these people think USAA and other mutual companies are not tax-paying entities. Bull crap. They pay income tax for sure. It's just because they're not publicly traded, they don't have to appeal on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter challenge like these other firms have to where they got to make uh, their earnings. They don't have to do that USA. So that's what USAA is. And because that, a lot of times their profits can go back, well, should go back to the employees or the shareholder, the members, I, I, I'm one. And so because of that, they typically have pretty good rates. But usually it's not outstanding. I mean, a lot of times you can get a good rate at USAA, but not necessarily so much better than anyone else that you wouldn't want to shop around. So definitely shop around. But we're just going to go to USA right now. So we take first and foremost $100,000. All right, so 100000 bucks, And I'm saying I'm 65 years old. Me, wife is 65 years old, okay? So we're both 65 years old today. Yeah, let me just put some shade up there so you can see that. And that'll be the last time we really need it. I got the light shining on that. But anyway, that's what that says. We're both 65 today. Can I do that real quick? No. Anyway, either way. This is 65 today. All right. So we're both 65. We're going to have $100,000 going in to an income annuity. An income annuity. So if we're going to do it for our joint life, All right, so let me explain what joint life means. That means as long as either of us are breathing, the annuity will pay out. I could die tomorrow, the annuity will still pay out. She could die 50 years from now, the annuity could still pay out. I could die tomorrow, when she dies 10 years, the annuity is done. So the minute the surviving spouse dies, or it doesn't have to be a spouse, but in this case it is. The minute the surviving spouse dies, the annuity no longer pays out. That's what joint life means. So there is some risk to you in that if your spouse dies, early after you died early then all this money is gone i'll explain what happens to this money in what's called mortality credits so that pays out 484 dollars a month and actually 34 cents a month right now 
All right, so that pays out $484 a month. Now, I went to Vanguard. I said, okay, what's the life expectancy at Vanguard? Um, Because Vanguard is a nice little tool. It's pretty easy. It has nothing to do with if you smoke, if you're obese, if you're morbid, nothing. It just says put your age and put your gender, and then it'll give you life expectancy. So what's the life expectancy for Charlotte and me? Uh, If we live to 90 years old, there's a 45% chance that one of us will live to 90. So I think that's a pretty safe bet, given that neither of us smoke or drink. And we're in pretty good shape. So we're going to say we're going to get this for 25 years. One of us will get this for 25 years. We're going to get $484 a month for 25 years, be it she or be it I. My life expectancy is only uh, the likelihood that I live until I'm 90 is only 20%. The likelihood that she lives until she's 90 is 32%. Huh. But yet the likelihood that both of us live till 90, one of us lives till 90 as a married unit, it goes up to 45%. Isn't that weird? So 20% for me as a man, 32% for her as a woman. Combine us with a chance that one of us will live to 90, 45%, which is interesting how the life expectancies increases for joint couples as opposed to individuals. I'll maybe go into that later on when it comes to getting an annuity instead of joint life in individual names. But for right now, just remember, we have a 45% chance of living to 90. All right, so we're going to assume we're going to live to 90. So we're going to get $484 a month. And again, we'll just say Charlotte dies at 90. That's 25 years now. uh, 25 times 12 equals 300 payments at $484. And what, 34 cents? That means we're going to net $145,000. That's what we'll get. $145,000. That's what we'll get if we live, one of us lives till 90. Put $100,000 in there at 65. We're going to gain $45,000 essentially of taxable interest. Now, if this comes from an IRA, it's all taxes, ordinary income. If this comes from a, a non IRA, you're going to pay tax as income on that $45,000, not dividends or capital gains, ordinary income. That is one of the drawbacks about annuities, but if it's coming from an IRA, it doesn't matter. So that's how annuities work. You put $100,000 in, you're going to do it for joint life based on two life expectancies of 20, of uh, two life expectancies of a man and woman at 65 years old. You'll get $484 um, a month for as ever long as you live. All right. So you're with me so far. Now there's going to be a method to my madness here. And so you can say we will get $145,000 at our death. Or, I mean, over the course of our life, as long as one of us lives until he or she, and in this case, she is 90 years old all right so now let's go here now what happens in this case we're getting 484 was it 400 and uh yeah 84 dollars i'm just say 484 times that by 12 equals what's our actual payout rate and so 484 times 12 is 5800 a, a year five thousand eight hundred and eight dollars a year all right, so that is 5.8% distribution rate, 5.8%. Why do I say that? Because we put $100,000 in and we're getting 5,000 a year. And so 5,800 a year divided by 100,000 is 5.8%. I, that's literally that simple. Now people say, oh, Josh, uh, and you can't compare this to a bond. You just can't. Now, and this is where we'll get into it in the next episode of Bonds on this side of it. Because that's a return of principle. At your death, there's no more $100,000. If you die, that $100,000 is gone. There's no other way around that. This is not liquid. You can't get a lump sum distribution. You can't do anything. At the end of the day, this money is removed from your liquid net worth. This is converted to an income stream instead, like Social Security. Social Security is not part of your liquid net worth. Social Security is part of your income, absolutely, but you can't take a lump sum distribution. You can't sell it or anything like that. It'll only be there on a monthly basis until you die, regardless of the state of your financial situation. If you need $25,000 as a lump sum to pay off some loan shark who's going to break your legs, you don't have access to that. It's gone. It's gone in terms of 5.8% each year as a distribution. Now, again, that distribution is partly return of principal and partly uh, interest. And if we just saw, we had $145,000, what we got back from 100, I guess I keep doing, what's I do? Watch this, what if I did it? So we had put $100,000 in, and we got $145,000 out, which means we had a 55% in that case, 
fifty. We got a, so he, he started with a hundred thousand, got one hundred forty-five thousand out. We get four hundred eighty-four dollars a month. So in this case, fifty-five percent of each payment is return of principal, and forty-five percent equals interest. All right. So if this was a non-IRA account. Of every $484 that you got, 55% would be return of principal. 484 times 0.55 would be, so $266 would be principal, and you pay tax on the remainder, minus 484. You pay tax on 217. So two, 266 of each payment is return of principal. And then 217 of each payment is interest which is taxable so when I say you get 5.8 percent that is true what you're getting but that's not 5.8 percent interest that's 5.8 percent of which 55 percent is the return of principal so let's just go back to 5.8 percent and we times that by 0.55 so that means 3.2 percent of this 5.8 is your return of principal. Does that make sense? So 3.2 of the 5.8, so 5.8 minus 3.2, which means you're getting 2.6 as an interest. And it's, it's really, a little bit more goes into that. But for simplicity, if I'm getting $484 back and I live till I'm, one of us lives until she, in her case, Charlotte is 90, she'll get $145,000, which means I made $45,000 of interest on my money, all right, which at the end of the day is 4.5% interest that I've made, or 45% of my $100,000 was interest, and the rest was return of principal. I'm getting my $100,000 back. So at the end of the day, that's a 5.8% distribution rate, $484 a month times 12 is $5,800 a year, which is a 5.8% distribution rate on this amount right here, of which 55% of that is return of principal, which means the remaining is my interest. And if you calculate like that, you get what I say, 2.6% is my interest. Never change, never go up. Now it can change, and I'll share that with you here in just a second. And I'll show you why the annuity is actually a pretty favorable thing, especially if you're in good health. All right, so I hope that makes sense. So that's how if an income annuity works. You And I tell you, if you if you ever come across a salesman, he goes, you're going to get 5.8% interest. Like he's a charitable gift annuities. Oh, it ticks me off. You'll see in the magazines or something like that, it says, oh, if you donate to the SBCA as a charitable gift annuity or the art dealership, whatever, we'll give you a 7.6%. Uh, interest, or that's what they that's what they make it seem like. And it's not seven point six percent. It's part of your return of principal and part of your interest as well. And that just it drives you up the wall because you're not getting seven point six percent in traditional interest mechanism uh, like a bond or a CD. It's not working like that. You're on an annuity of any sort. Just remember, an annuity of any sort, you're getting a return of your premium and you're getting interest. You're getting one of both of those things without question. We're using this, I would say that's a distribution rate because you are getting a distribution rate of 5.8. But you can't make that comparison to a bond, which has a yield or a, actually in this case, a coupon of 3%. That's, and I'm just you throwing that number out there. You can't say, well, 5.8%, that's 10 times better than the bond. I should go with an annuity. No, 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 that's crazy talk. But people will take advantage of if you do that. So don't do that. Remember, distribution rate and yields are two completely different things. And I don't think a lot of people get that. And just having been um, in this business for a long time and talked about annuities for a long time, I know for a fact people don't get it. And I know for a fact a lot of people who should get it, i.e. the salesman or a woman, will prey on the ignorance of somebody. And that's not good. Which is sad because annuities have a wonderful mechanism that should be used. So let's talk about now, we got five, how can we increase our interest on the annuity? Well, remember, we start with 100000 bucks. And we had you living until you were 20, uh, 90. Now I'm going to have you live until you're 95 years old. So it doesn't matter. I kick off, Josh kicks off at you know two years hence, and Charlotte lives for another 30 years. We're still getting $484 a month. But now we're getting it for 360 months because we're living for 95 years old or 30 more years. So now we take 484 times 360 now we get hundred and seventy four thousand dollars no 
Notice anything different? Well, now I got $74,000 on top of the $100,000 I put in. So now we say at the end of the day, okay, that's good. So if we got, let me do some quick calculation here. Let me go, uh, we're going to enter. So we say I start with $100,000. My present value, I get uh, $484 as my payment. Got no future value, did for 360 months. Now my rate of return is 4.11% because I'm making as a dot. Because I'm making $74,000 off this initial 100,000 bucks. And that's the benefit of an income annuity. The longer you live, the more bang for your buck. That's what makes it such a wonderful proposition, my friends. You say at the end of the day, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm doing as a joint life expectancy for my spouse and my and me. And if I can live another 30 years, which I think I can because I don't smoke, I don't drink, got a history of long life in my family, this sucker is going to pay off nicely. It would be guaranteed each and every year to pay me $484 a month for as however long I live. If I only live 10 years, it's done. But I don't care because I'm gone. If I live 30 years, I get paid like a, a screeching banshee. I'm telling you, that's where the annuities really kick in. If you think you're going to live 25 or 30 years from the day you sign up an annuity, you just can't beat it. You're not going to get a better IRR, internal rate of return, than 4.1% and a guaranteed product in this day and age. No way. Um, well, I shouldn't say you're not. You could, but you have to shop. You're certainly going to take risk because there's no risk in this at all other than USA going bankrupt. Now, each state has a little bit called a state guarantee, uh, G-U-A-R-N-T-Y Association, which they back some annuities and some life insurance contracts. Not getting into that. I have no idea really all that much about them, but usually it's between 100 and 250,000 bucks. It doesn't matter. USA going bankrupt, we're all screwed. That's all there's to it. And the why is that, by the way? Why do insurance companies tend to not go bankrupt so much? Life insurance companies and things of that nature, property and casualty, because they are the biggest holder of government bonds. All right. So the only reason they go bankrupt is two things. One is they undercharge, like these long term care providers, they weren't charged enough premium uh, to cover their outlying uh, risks that they had, i.e., more people drawing on long term care needs for a, longer, a lot longer. And you can't really blame the insurance companies for that. They just had no actuarial studies to see back in the mid 80s and mid 90s how long people would live and how much they need in long-term care facilities. They just had no idea. Uh, but for life insurance and insurance companies, an annuity is a life insurance contract. And new, uh, insurance companies know without question the risks that are involved in their number of people that are going to die before a certain amount of time. They, they just know that. So there's absolutely inexplicable why an insurance company would go bankrupt who's a life insurance. It just, I mean, it could have, but it's just inexplicable if it were. Especially a mutual company like USA, which it doesn't appeal to shareholders, it just appeals to the members. Uh, so at the end of the day, an insurance company, because of the fact uh, they own so many government bonds and they know for a fact to the T who is going to die and when, and not who, not for Barbara versus Jane, but as one of those two people will die at 77 and the other one will die at 84. They knew this precisely. Now, the only risk that they have is the government debt that they have, all right? And so government debt, which is guaranteed by the feds, as long as the federal government stays solvent, insurance companies are going to stay solvent. Um, obviously, there's any exception to this rule here, but just at the end of the day, don't worry so much about the risk of a large insurance company simply because they, they know how much, what is going to happen to Jane versus Barbara in the overall scheme of things. And they have tons and tons and tons, billions and billions and billions of dollars of government bonds as their support system. Every time you pay a premium, they're going to the market, they're buying government bonds. That's what they're doing. So they own more government bonds than almost anybody. So not likely they're going to go bankrupt. Anything can happen, my friends, but just on a huge issue when they can ascertain the risk so easily and quickly. All right, so that is a annuity at uh, 30. And that, so what I wanna show you there is how much better it can be the longer you live. Now, I do wanna go over a couple things. Actually, maybe I'll take a break. Yeah, let's take a break. We'll come back and do another one. So I'm gonna do take a break here.